And welcome everybody to Geeking Poetic Podcast Channel. One of your hosts, Larry Roberts. Uh, over here, this fallen Padawan who's stuck in the world between worlds <laughs> <laughs> with both her lightsabers and doesn't know what to do is none other than Megan Guess. And what are we here to talk about? We are talking about episode five of Ahsoka, Shadow Warrior. Yeah, Shadow Warrior is the name of the episode and what an episode it was. Man, there is a lot to talk about with this episode. (laughs) But before we get into that, a couple of things. First of all, we got to say thank you to everybody who's been watching the videos, who's been liking and commenting and subscribing. We love it. It means so much to us. Keep doing it, please. Yes, please keep doing it. If you have not already, please click the subscribe button so that you know when the next episode is coming out and you can be informed about all the stuff coming up. And it just really, really helps us. Even just clicking the like helps us a lot and uh, we appreciate it. The other thing that we need to tell you is that this show has sp- Spoilers. All the spoilers. Lots and lots of spoilers. So if you are not up to speed on what's going on with Star Wars Ahsoka, then highly suggest that you also pause, go watch the episode, and then come back. And then we can tell you all our thoughts about it. (laughs) So speaking of our thoughts about it, Megan, what was your overall thoughts on Shadow Warrior. I am enjoying every bit of this ride. I really like this episode. From the very beginning, I love the way it came in all slow and then it got all intense. And I, I, everything. I I don't think I have hardly any complaints. And what I do, they're super minor because I want more of it, basically. (laughs) How about you? Yeah, well, as always, what we'll do is we'll talk about our thoughts and we'll kind of recap. We're going to do as brief of a recap as possible, but uh, we will get into our highlights and our lowlights. And yeah, my feelings echo yours. I'm not going to have much in the way of lowlights with this. I, honest to gosh, feel that this is not only the best episode of Ahsoka so far. This is probably one of the best Disney era Star Wars episodes of all of them. You know, Mandalorian, Obi-Wan, Book of Boba Fett. This was to me one of those episodes that I was just like, oh my gosh, like this feels like Star Wars to me. And it's it's so crucial what they did in this episode for the entire overarching Star Wars universe and tying things together. Mm -hmm. Um, We'll get more into that a little bit later, but yeah, I loved this episode. This is the first one that I can say I liked to varying degrees the previous four. Episode five, loved this episode. And I have to say also, as I was watching it, it maybe not quite halfway through it, and I was thinking in my head about how I know some theaters were showing this episode. They were, yeah. Now it makes sense why they chose this one. Very cinematic. Very, very cinematic. If there was an episode of this show I'd want to see... I mean, obviously, we've got three more episodes to come. So who knows what will happen next. But out of the five, yeah, this would be the one I'd want to see in the theater. Because, Mm -hmm. wow, it was epic. So, yeah, without any further ado, let's just do the recap part. Um, We're not going to get super duper specific and drawn out with every scene because, again, we assume that you've watched it already. So we're just going to kind of recap it so we can comment on it, right? Okay, go for it. All right, the episode starts uh, on the surface of Satos. Uh, it's the location where the star map was cracked open by Balin in the, at the end of the last episode. After losing some pilots and stuff due to uh, Morgan Elsbeth's Eye of Cyan <laughs> warping off at the end of the last episode, that was that was grim. It's awesome. But it, it was awesome, <laughs> but unfortunate. And, and, and Elsbeth made the hyperspace jump. Hera is there trying to figure out what the heck happened because there's no trace of anything other than finding the busted in half star map thing Mm -hmm. she does come across our friend Hu Yang who which is a great scene or Hu Yang's holding Sabine's helmet and seems like he's really torn up yeah he's feeling bad yeah I'm sure they didn't listen they didn't listen and I think also because he couldn't have done more to help you know I mean he tried to fight and everything but Mm -hmm. there was only so much he could do and everybody uh, has their piece of it and he was playing his part yeah 
The girls didn't listen. Yeah, they, they didn't. Here we are. Yeah, so, but he was kind of mourning them, but, you know, they're not going to give up yet. You know, he, he brings up to them that, like, hey, they could be anywhere, especially knowing Ahsoka. There's so many possibilities of what's going on here. Meanwhile, it jumps over to the World Between Worlds, which is, if you don't understand the World Between Worlds thing, we can't explain it to you here. You're going to have to go and do some research on it. Um, There's whole videos just explain because it, it's it's a lot. It is it's it is a lot, and it was something that was introduced in Star Wars Rebels. It's basically a realm like a that connects all space and time and yes. death and life. It connects it's everything right. in between. Right, and so you can kind of travel time through it, but you're also kind of in this sort of like almost like a limbo between life and death. Mm-hmm. It's it's really complicated, but uh, that's where Ahsoka went after her defeat uh, by Balin and everything. As we saw at the last episode, she sees a younger Anakin Skywalker, her master. Anakin is there. She's kind of happy to see him, but sort of confused, a little bit scared. <laughs> you know. We all are. Yeah, we're right she knows. there with her. Right. And uh, Anakin tells her, hey, look, uh, you you haven't finished your training. You need to finish your training. She's saying, I'm too old for that. He goes, no, 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 no. You're never too old for that. And uh, so they start battling. They start fighting, having a lightsaber battle. Like, we just jump right into it, Mm -hmm. you know? Meanwhile, while that's going on, Hera and her team are all of the uh, the uh, X-Wing squadron are all getting frustrated, going, well, there's nothing here, and we're going to have to answer for this. And I like the little thing they threw in about how, you know, General Organa can only cover for us for so long. Uh Uh-huh. At least she was doing, trying to do something this time. Yeah, well, again, I I love the fact that that's kind of hinting at where things went with Organa because by the time we see Leia in The Force Awakens, she's now sort of broken off from the stupid-ass, useless New Republic idiotic politicians that don't do anybody any damn good. Yep. Uh, Leia has broken off from that and basically started up the resistance, you know, the new resistance and everything as a general. So you can see that you could see that building up to that, you know, mm-hmm. that we're we're putting those little building blocks in for where we're going to end up with The Force Awakens. I, I loved that. While they're trying to figure out what they're going to do and, and how they're going to answer for this because they they can't find Sabine or Ahsoka. Meanwhile, Jason is f- reaching out with the force into the water and stuff he's standing there with chopper your favorite (laughs) and he starts feeling that there's something going on and he can hear things in the waves and at first Hera typical they always do this it's such a trope you know Hera's like shut up Jason not now Jason and it's like oh my god listen to your damn kid (laughs) But luckily, that doesn't drag on too long. No, she she catches on quick. Yeah, she she realizes that he's you know figuring something out, and he's basically using the force. Mm-hmm. I mean, at this point, I don't think anybody here included is going to be super shocked that Jason is like you know force sensitive. For, no, super force sensitive. He's already shown it a couple of times now. Right, and he's he's Kanan's kid. You right. know, it's like come on, man. So anyway, he starts telling her like. I can I can hear a lightsaber battle like I hear some going on and he's able to reach out through the force to enable her to also be able to hear the lightsaber battle which I thought that was particularly cool was that she was able to hear it too you know Mm -hmm. kind of harkens back to when Kanan was telling her that everybody has it you just have to believe exactly so he was making her believe yeah he was helping her with it that was nice yeah that was super cool so once she hears that she's like okay wait a minute there's something going on here we can't figure it out get down to the water right so they just so they take off and they just start scanning the water and the planet and stuff seeing if they can find any trace whatsoever of Ahsoka and or Sabine. Meanwhile, back in the world between worlds, uh, Ahsoka thinks that she's, you know, she's, yeah, she's got the upper hand. She's being Snips, which was his nickname for her when she was his Padawan and everything. She's being Snips. She's being sassy and cocky and everything. You nothing to offer me anymore, do you? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah? (laughs) Yeah. And Anakin's like, okay, check this out. And he basically cuts her path so that she suddenly falls into infinity type thing and we suddenly see that she has now been transported back in time it's almost more like like a a, memory like a memory like like a reflection of time Mm -hmm. we see young ahsoka so it's not rosario anymore it is another actress and it's the young actress who played young gamora yeah 
in <laughs> Avengers. So I love this actress. Yeah, she's in perfect, Great. perfect casting for it. Uh, that she played young Gamora in Infinity War and everything, and she's playing young Ahsoka. And to see her as young Ahsoka, and then we see Anakin from the beginning of the Clone Wars. He's got the shorter hair. He's got that certain armor on and everything. We get to see all of those clone troopers in real life, like actual guys in clone trooper suits and stuff. We've never seen that before because not only were they obviously animated on the Clone Wars and stuff, but even in the prequel movies, all those clone troopers, those were all CG. Okay. If you're a Clone Wars fan and you're seeing all this play out because they're essentially kind of almost reenacting certain scenes because this first scene is when they have the battle um, when they're trying to on the Twi'lek planet. That was right out of the Clone Wars series. So getting to see that brought to life is like super cool. Um, another thing I wanted to bring up before we pass by it is when we were seeing all those uh, flashbacks and stuff, we actually got to see very brief but we got to see good old Captain Rex being played by Tamura Morrison. Mm -hmm. That was super cool. And you see that she's conflicted and you see that she's blaming herself for all these deaths and she's blaming herself for, you know, not uh, making, saving more people. Yeah, making bad decisions and they depended on her and she got them killed. And Right. And, and you begin to realize that the whole point of this um, journey, this exercise, as it will, part of her completing her training and what Anakin is doing with her now in this world between worlds is she's having to go back and deal with all of these unresolved regrets towards mm -hmm. herself, towards situations. A lot of, you know, she's bringing up the fact that well, you know, I wasn't supposed to be being trained to fight wars. I don't want to fight and everything. I'm supposed to just be like a keeper of peace. And mm -hmm. Anakin's explaining to her, like, th this is where it's at. Like, you have to learn to adapt and you can't blame yourself for this. Like, you know, he's just trying to get her, but he can't explain that to her. She has to realize this for herself. Right. And the main lesson here is basically that she's got to keep fighting in order to survive. The galaxy... Yeah, he's like, I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight anymore. I just don't want to. And right. Like, right. You, you have to. Right. You just have to. Yeah. If you want to live, you have to. Exactly. And the galaxy desperately needs her to be there because she's a part of something bigger. It's just the gradual understanding that Anakin's fall from grace and falling to the dark side was not her fault. It was his. It was, was his path. That was he couldn't overcome his demons. Right. And it was his destiny. Right. You know, as hard as that is to understand when people said, well, you're supposed to bring balance to the force. And it's like, well, him falling to the dark side was part of that. Everybody just took it at, you know, verbatim, like, well, no, it means he's going to be the big champion hero and make everything great. It's like, no, it's a it's a much tougher path than that. Mm -hmm. And even going back to the Obi-Wan TV series, when Obi-Wan and Vader fight towards the end of that, Obi-Wan has a lot of the same thing. He has a lot of regrets and guilt and stuff about what happened with Anakin. And it, it cause you got to remember up to that point, he thought he killed Anakin. He didn't know Darth Vader was Anakin. Right. And then he finds out that he is. And Anakin tells him in that episode says like, you know, you didn't kill Anakin Skywalker. I killed Anakin Skywalker. And this is sort of the same thing just a different route but it's basically getting the same thing across to ahsoka ahsoka and vader anakin because he turns into red-eyed vader anakin <laughs> end up having this last you know battle and i gotta say the lightsaber battles are awesome i agree i'm really liking how that played out it was a little brief but it got the point across and ultimately at the end of it he's telling her again like you have to choose you know live or die blah 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 and she gets it she's like no i want to live and you realize that she's now finally learned she's now finally done what she needed to do to become a jedi she that was part of her training just like luke when he had to go confront vader not kill vader confront vader like Yoda told him. Because like you and I talked about before, the whole thing with Ahsoka is that she's always 
she's always just kind of nihilistic, you know, right? She's always like, she always seems like she has a little bit of a reckless, like, yeah, she's like, if I die, I die. It's whatever. Right. Yeah. If I got to do things that aren't completely right, you know, just to get to the, you know, means to an end. Right. Exactly. Then whatever we'll then what whatever right because she's always felt like she was a little bad and useless mm-hmm. and now she realizes that she's not ahsoka is able to forgive anakin and she fully embraces his teachings because that's the other thing he keeps telling her is like everything i know and am is in you now and she's always been fighting against that because she's so worried that that means she's She's gonna turn bad and she realizes that she doesn't have to fear that anymore now she's got renewed focus she's also learned some lessons because he mentions to her in her flashback things about how teaching's hard Mm -hmm. Being a teacher is hard. What does that mean? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <so> <laughs> yeah, that was really you funny. You know what he means. Yeah, yeah. You were a pain in the butt, just like Sabine uh-huh. can be for you. And, you know, and, and even like things about like teaching isn't just about teaching somebody how to fight. Like there's there's a lot more to it. And I thought that was very crucial. I was really glad they threw that in there because that's going to be, I think, very important for her growth later. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, Ahsoka now has everything that was good about Anakin in her and none of the bad as long as she stays on the course. Um, Ahsoka is able to exit, go back to life, back to the real world. She finds herself floating underwater. Meanwhile, Chopper has detected her body's like presence there under the water and tells tells uh jason to tell hera yeah tells to find her. which is funny yeah um he's like where hello yeah <laughs> i said hello <laughs> he says pretty low yeah so he he they end up going back turning around and going back and they're gonna start start scouring the the water the uh the ocean floor so to speak to see if they can detect whatever this is chopper is finding so they do find Ahsoka. They're able to rescue her, bring her back aboard her ship and everything. And after she's rested for a while, I don't, they, I don't really know. The, I don't know if it's supposed to be like she'd been resting for a day or several days, like a fortnight kind of thing. Yeah, it made it sound like a day, a full day she rested. Maybe. Okay. One rotation is what it said. Well, yeah, one rotation. Exactly. So I'm going to take that that it was like probably a day. A day. So after this revival that she has and everything she comes back to life and you can tell that she is changed now for one thing just appearance wise she's changed now she's gandalf the white right (laughs) (laughs) they basically just kind of ganked that from lord (laughs) of the rings but that's that's fine whatever but she's got all white on and you could tell even just the way she's carrying herself she has this you could just tell without saying it peace on life yes exactly Exactly. Confidence and she's let loose and she's more in tune. In, yeah. Right? Like she feels like she's more in tune with things. She's here now. Right. She's present. She's in the present. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, she's not being held back by her past anymore. Right. Exactly. Like she goes up there and she hugs Jason as he runs to her. It was really sweet. And very, and he was very interested. She was very interested when she found out that he was able to like hear her lightsaber battle and everything. Like, and she oh. was like, oh, really? Okay. Uh, well, like, Put that on the back burner. Yeah. Hold that thought. This little dude's got some serious force power if he can do that. She does that and she, when she's looking up in the sky and everything, she sees a whole pod of space whales going by the Pergil and she has a revelation and tells Carson Teva, the one uh, lead X-Wing cop, (laughs) And Hera to figure out a way to hold off these New Republic ships that are coming to basically coming to arrest them, so to speak, because Hera just went rogue. Like we said in the last episode, she didn't get clearance to go do this. She just went rogue and was like, I, I, I got to get I got to get this done. And like I said Princess Leia or General Leia, excuse me, uh, covered for her for a little bit. But now they've been informed by Mon Mothma that it's like, well, you went off and did this. You were told not to, and you have no proof of anything. So you and Ahsoka are going to have to come back to Coruscant and answer for this. So Ahsoka's like, you're going to have to go hold them off for a while while I'm going to figure out how to do what we got to do. And what they ultimately decide is they're going to go up and engage the 
pod of Pergil, mm-hmm. Pergil, whatever they are. <laughs> Ahsoka is going to hitch a ride. She's going to hitch a ride with one of the big whales. It was super cool to see her when she's like interacting, reaching out with the force and like communicating with it. And then it just opens up its big old mouth. <laughs> And it was very Pinocchio. It was very Pinocchio. It was very Pinocchio. Very Jonah and the whale. There's a lot of allegory to to that. That The whole whale thing has been used multiple times over history. Makes me think of Dory. I speak whale. (laughs) Yeah, it was very very Dory of her. Yes, exactly. That's, that's That's a good one. I didn't even think of that. But yeah, so she ends up communicating, and the uh, ultimately what she does is she and Hu Yang take their ship and plant themselves right inside the mouth of a space whale, while uh, <laughs> poor Carson Teva and then later Hera are explaining to these New Republic ships, like, listen, uh, you better get out of the way because there's a whole pod of uh, space whales that are going to jump to hyperspace any moment now and everything. You don't want to be there when that happens. so Right. And Hera, you know, tells, says, may the force be with you, which was awesome, to Ahsoka and bids them farewell. And the last thing we see is that they take off into hyperspace. I also think it's hilarious that Hu Yang's like, oh, okay, so this whale's going to take us to uh, the other galaxy where Ezra and all that are. And, and <laughs> like, I don't know. Ahsoka's literally like, I don't know. I have no idea. And she's so chill about it. She's just like, hey, we're just going along for the ride. Yeah. You know, like, she it's, believes in the force. It will get her where she needs to go in it, due time. Exactly. When she needs to be there. So. Ex- exactly. And it was without saying it so specifically, it's basically her saying, like, I have faith again. I have faith in the force. I have faith that I'm going to go where I need to go. It's beautiful. It was so well done. This was an awesome episode. Loved it. Yeah. Since there's so little, let's start with the low points. Okay. All right. So yep. what would you say was a low point for you? Um, One of my low points was Chopper. Okay. Why? Um, it just seemed... Every time he was on scene, he was very quiet and muted down. And that's not Chopper. Give me my Chopper. Where's my sass? <laughs> I want more. Come on. And again, that, that's my minor complaint because I wanted more. Okay. I mean. It's not that he did anything wrong or this was set up badly or anything like that. I just want more. I, I love Chopper. He's yeah. my favorite. I want more sass from him, please. I think we'll get there. Yeah. I think we're going to get there. I think there's going to be plenty of room. There's going to be more battles and things going on and like tense situations because that's when you always get all the best chopper stuff is when there's like tense you know situations going on and yeah i think there's a couple missed opportunities for chopper here but that's my one minor very minor okay my low point isn't even really a low point for me it's it's just something that i could see being perceived as a low point And I think it's something that's been an issue with the whole series. Um, But this episode in particular, I think is going to be an issue for people. And it's that if people have been watching this and trying to just coast through it without really knowing the backstory of these characters, going back to the first Clone Wars movie and the whole Clone Wars series, and then rebels and even to a certain degree the bad batch and stuff like that like if you are not familiar enough with a lot of that stuff wow i feel bad for you because you're not only you're going to miss out on so much of the cool references and things like for example the one point when she flashes back to the siege of mandalore and everything uh and you, you got to see those uh mandalorians the uh the ones that were loyal to Darth Maul and all that kind of stuff. Like, I got super excited seeing them. I'm like, oh, look at it. Like, oh my God, real action seeing them. Like, <laughs> I want to see more of that. If you don't know about that story, like, because you didn't watch Clone Wars and you didn't watch, like, that's just lost on you. That's just completely lost on you. Yeah, and I know you didn't watch all that either. However, at least you've done the due diligence of being like, I don't know this stuff. So you've gone back like we ex- we've suggested to you at home. 
you've gone back and you've watched recap things. Yeah, I've you've, done some research. You know, going on other channels, we'll just, you know, give them plugs and stuff like mm-hmm. Screen Crush and, and those guys and uh, New rock stars and all them that that end up giving you like a, a, a condensed, a condensed lesson. lesson. Yeah, like giving you the cliff notes on all that to at least get you there. You've at least done that. So you know the significance. You know about Darth Maul. You know about him with the dark saber, and you you know what I mean? And and you watched all of Rebels. So you were able to kind of glean a lot of it after the fact from that too. Mm-hmm. But for people that didn't watch any of that stuff, like, yeah, it, it's it's a problem because this is really reliant on that. And I think that by them calling this Ahsoka and not calling this Rebels season five, which is really what it is, um, I think it's going to frustrate. I already have seen that it is. It's frustrating a lot of people who are like, man, I just wanted to watch the new Star Wars series. And now I'm being told that not only do I got to go watch four seasons of Rebels, but I got to watch like, I forget what it is, six seasons of Clone Wars and there's a lot to take in with that and I love it like because I am up to speed on all that and this is very exciting and it's well done it's so cool to see things brought to life from those series and and flash back to but if you're not into that stuff then yeah this is gonna probably leave a lot of people really flat And that's a downside. And then another perceived downside, although you and I talked about this and I know other people were complaining about this and ultimately I don't necessarily agree is that it's something of a tease. Like this episode, getting to see the Siege of Mandalore just for a couple minutes, getting to see the Twi'lek battle, you know, the battle on their planet and all that kind of stuff. Those little snippets of all that. It's such a tease that it's like, oh, I want more of this. Like I bring this back. Like, let's just revisit all of this and do it with Hayden Christensen and all that. Like, oh my God. And the, and the young actress playing Ahsoka, like this is great. You know, Disney does all live action anymore. It might happen. It, it might happen. You know, (laughs) that'd be a lot. I think it's a lot. And I, I don't know if they, if Dave Filoni and them are going to really mess with it that much. But um, that that is probably the only downside I would see. Otherwise, everything else, upsides. Yeah, well, I have one. Okay. Minor, again. I don't know. I want more exposition. Yeah, okay. I guess because, like, the last episode I said, I hope the whole world between the worlds is Anakin releasing Ahsoka from all her past... Everything hindering her. I didn't quite get all of that, but again, because I'm not caught up on everything, I had to go back and do some research and stuff like that, and then to realize is like, okay, I fully understand what exactly happened here because they didn't just flat out say, "Hey, you, I'm absolving you of all your this stuff. It wasn't your fault." Yeah, it wasn't. It <laughs> wasn't it was just, spelled out. It so wasn't clearly. spelled out. So I had to go do some extra research to realize that's exactly what happened after the fact. Right, and that goes along with what I was just saying. If yeah, you're exactly. Not, if you're not somebody that's really familiar, then you're not going to understand all the significance of even the dialogue they did say and the, the significance behind what they were saying. And yeah, and so that that's that's problematic. I yeah, think. and then they did stick that one in there where. Um, who Yang was telling X-Wing guy like who Jason was and why we should listen to him. He's like, oh, okay, let's go, you know? Yeah. And that I think that was for the benefit of people that don't yeah, have that like, backstory. Be, right, exactly. They put but, in just that little bit of exposition there for them. Right, because there's been almost no mention of... Kanan. Yeah. Yeah, so they officially mentioned Kanan now. Right. So, which I really hope we get to see him. Ah, from what I heard, we're not going to see Kanan. From what I heard that there is no Kanan in this, but I suppose we could be surprised. Yeah. You never know. And I mean, with the positives, geez, I mean, we'll be here all night <laughs> yeah, talking about the positives. Exactly. Um, again, I loved seeing the reenactments and the and the live reenactments of those scenes. Yeah, I loved how smoky and hazy and yeah. like in a dream it really was. I, I, I loved how that was shot. Yeah, they did that very wisely. I thought that was a very wise choice to do it that way. Again, further development of all these characters. I loved the way Hera handled everything. I thought that she's, you know, I I like that even when she knew that she was in deep 
doo doo, <laughs> you know, and everything because she was had the uh, New Republic coming after and everything. She was just like, I'll handle it, you know, like, cool. Like, she's so like, nope, I know that I got to do this. Like, Hera is supposed to be a badass who doesn't really, you know, easily just kowtow to other people and their orders and stuff. And I yeah. like that we're seeing that, you know, because at first she seemed like she was being a little wishy-washy. I in the know, early. I'm loving this. Right, in the earlier episodes. And now I think she's kind of seeing like, okay, this is where things are going. Gosh, everything about it, I just I just loved everything about this episode. I so thoroughly enjoyed it. And um, as far as like, we usually like to end with our thoughts and going forward where things are going. First of all, like I mentioned earlier, I think the whole thing with bringing up about the teacher fact and, and Ahsoka learning a lot about like how difficult it is to be a Jedi master and have a Padawan and all that kind of stuff. I think that the end of this, you know, I'm hoping Sabine doesn't die. Please don't do that to us. Um, I think at the end of this, I think Sabine's thing is she's going to be like, look, I'm not meant to be a Jedi. Mm -hmm. That's not my destiny. It's not who I am. It's okay that I'm not that force sensitive. I, that's not who I'm supposed to be. You know, I understand that you wanted me to be that for you. You, you felt like I needed to be your Padawan and all that. I don't think that's who I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be a Mandalorian leader. Right. That's what she's, that's her destiny. And I think Jason is going to be the Padawan for Ahsoka. For Ahsoka? Okay. Yes. I think Ahsoka is going to be like, no, I need to take this kid who's clearly super force sensitive. He needs guidance. He needs a teacher and a master and all that stuff. And she's going to become Jason's new master. I think that's where that's going. I, okay. I bet my x-wing on it you know <laughs> so that's one of my theories do you have any theories about where things are going um i heard what i thought was very interesting okay is that balin and all them leading up to building a new trinity okay so when i heard was that anakin is the father right. of this trinity because he's obviously c overcome where wherever he's at in this world between the worlds you know where they reside mm -hmm. not really here or there he's the father and like maybe Balin's gonna be a part of that trinity I I don't know or find the other two pieces the son and the daughter unless it'd be him and Shin maybe maybe that's why he's so protective of her maybe I, to explain real quick I'm sure if you're watching this you probably are at least aware of it but the whole trinity thing they've talked about it it was especially touched upon in Rebels, Rebels. it's about the whole start of the Jedi Order that it started with this trinity with the with the the sister the brother and the and the father, father. or whatever and it yeah I mean that's getting very religious obviously <laughs> with the whole kind of holy trinity thing and all that stuff yeah I I do I like yeah the father's kind of like the balance between the two and right. the son was more dark side and the daughter was more light side correct if I remember correctly? yeah kind of yes but long story short basically that he's trying to bring like a whole and that's I was that was kind of my thought was that I think that they've made comments and there were comments made back in rebels about and and even with the emperor and stuff like that was that he who controls like the world between worlds and all that stuff and has that control over it controls everything mm -hmm. and I think that's what he's seeking Right. He's seeking that kind of control. He doesn't he's not on the side of the empire or anything like that. Not at all. Right. He he can't stand them. He'd be happy if they blew themselves into oblivion, you know what I mean? But he's also not on the side of like the New Republic, which I don't completely blame him because they suck. <laughs> they suck so far. You know, he's on the side of that we need to bring balance again. We need to sort of restart the whole it, it, whether even if you don't want to call it Jedi, but we need to restart that whole thing again, mm -hmm. which kind of goes along with what you're saying, right? And then that because I originally thought before Anakin came into the picture like that uh -huh. was that Balin would be the father because he sees both sides. He's very respectful of the Jedi Order and all right. that, how that works, right? But he also sees the importance of war and how that brings balance to it. So he sees that he's balanced. So then the question is why Who does he why does he want to get to 
what is the significance of getting to Thrawn? Why is he like, if we get to Thrawn, then we can do that? Like, what what answers will Thrawn have for that? I don't know, unless he has a way to get to it. Could be. Yeah, maybe if he figures Thrawn would have some answers for all that Because he was there for the whole Rebels thing. He was, he was there at Lothal when all that went down. Yeah, could be. Maybe he does have answers. And he's got Ezra. Could be. Who clearly has the way to open that thing. Yeah, maybe he doesn't really want Thrawn. Maybe he wants Ezra. He wants Ezra. You know, maybe that's what he uh, he wants. I also, I still stick to my theory that there's a chance that he wants to get to Thrawn, but not because of good reasons for Thrawn. You know what I mean? Like, not, not because to help Thrawn or, you know, so they can work together. I still wonder if he wants to get to Thrawn because he's like, I want to kill this bastard myself. You know what I mean? <laughs> mm-hmm. Or maybe there's something about doing that that he feels is going to, again, have to do with the greater good. balance and, yeah. and the greater good thing. Yes, exactly. So... A lot of interesting things. What I'm loving most yeah. about this series and really... All these things we do like this, yeah, is the speculation part of it. Sure, as long as we understand that it's just speculation. It's just speculation, just like the Merrick and stuff like that before, yeah. and that became nothing. But we all had such a blast speculating about it. And to be honest with you, I mean, I didn't think Merrick was anybody to begin with. I was kind of like, oh, we're going that route again. <laughs> like I, I had a feeling that wasn't going to be anything significant mm-hmm. and. Clearly, I was right in that case, you know. There's half the fun of this is watching it, and the other half is doing all the speculation to see right. what comes of it. Right. All these different avenues. Because obviously, they've filmed this months and months and months and months and months before. And it's a big intergalactic soap opera. That's all it is. Yep. But so, it's a blast. I'm having yeah, fun. It's fun. Well, we'll be back next week uh, to do our recap and review discussion thing of episode six. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this. We would love to hear your thoughts on the episode. Did you love it? Like we did. Did you not? Why didn't you let us know in the comments, make sure you like, and subscribe, come join us on Facebook. We have a free and open group on there called the geeking squad forum. And we run it and we just talk about this kind of stuff. It's just more talking about all sorts of geeky stuff. And then uh, hopefully we'll see you next week. So until then, uh, may the force be with all of you. And uh, we'll talk to you then. Bye, guys. See ya.